Navy chef. He's going to show you some culinary delights in the kitchen. So some traditional and some, um, I think he's going to do you some festive treats. So I'll let him tell you a bit more about that. Over to you, Sean. Oh, you're telling me already. Good evening, everybody. I'm, um, I'm Sean. I'm an uh, ex-Navy chef. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first and how I've become a veteran myself. I joined the Navy when I was a young lad, 17, 17 and a half. Something I'd always wanted to do. I was in the secret when like about 11 years old. It's one of those things I'd really wanted to do. Um, uh, I had a great career. I had some great people I worked with, some great ships. Stanley was one of them. Some of you might know Stanley. I don't know. If you do, look at you. Um, but um, yeah, I had a car accident in 2000 and uh, I was medically discharged two years later. Uh, so I became a veteran at 12 years old with uh, a two and a half year old son. And you see my little four and a half year old daughter in the background now. She's got me. <laughs> <laughs> she should be in bed now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, we've all had struggles in life. We know we've had a few of them. Uh, the car accident I was in, I lost my wife and son, left me with a two-year-old son, as I said earlier. But um, it's, um, you know, life is uh, one of those things you've you just got to get on with. Uh, the time stops for nobody, no man, no woman, no child. Um, it keeps going on and on and on. So, yeah, make the best of it what you can. And that's what I've done. You know, I've changed my career when I left the Navy. I became a qualified auto electrician. Um, I left that job after working weekends with a, as a single parent. It was a bit awkward for children. Um, I worked as a sales rep. I worked in schools, teaching and training. Um, I worked against this for all these people who like your pasties. I worked against this for a few, <laughs> few years or so. And then uh, I moved back up north in uh, 2011 after meeting my my first love uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s when I first joined them up. Um, I met her again and uh, yeah, we've got a little four-year-old daughter. We've been married uh, just okay. over seven years now. So yeah, life's turned around for the better. Um, I know I've had some shit times, but excuse the French, but uh, that's <laughs> life, you know, it does get better. Uh, just keep smiling. And uh, I'm going to cook some a uh, couple of dishes tonight. One of them is going to be your favourite, cheesy whammy bimbo. Cheesy wham bams or cheesy yummy eggs. <laughs> and um, I'll be doing, um, being Christmas time, I thought I'd do a little Christmas dish. I know a lot of you guys and gals might not be having big families around this year. So I thought I'd do something that's going to be cheap and cheerful, but be Christmassy at the same time. So you can do it with just like you know, two, three, four of you, rather than buying a big turkey, wasting all that money. Uh, you can do something a bit more simple, but still look quite as good and still be tasty and uh, look really good on Christmas Day. So uh, I'm going to make a start. Um, Right then, what I'm going to do, my first job is, I'm going to make some stuffing. I've got some sausage meat. Uh, you can buy sausage meat on its own, or you can buy, uh, you know, when you do your triple artists when you're baking for Christmas dinner, you could buy, just, just squeeze the sausages out and use that, use sausage meat in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put some cranberry sauce in my uh, in the mix, sausage meat. Depends on what you want, depends how sweet you want your stuffing. As you put two or three in, I'm going to sweep two for boards, hence why I've got one left. Um, mix it up, and what I'll do, I'll put it in everyone's favourite. Axel, I, back, I look backwards on my screen, so I hope it's not on yours. <laughs> then, I'm putting a bit of Paxman just to absorb the juices from the sausage meat and the moisture from the um, the cranberries, and it's give it's just mix it up nice and easy. Dead easy job to do. This is stuff you can do the day before, put it in the fridge, wrap it up. So when it comes to Christmas Day, you spend all your time doing your veg or drinking. That's what I do. Um, I keep going. What's that nice mixed up? Right then, uh, for a lot of you guys and gals who don't want to buy a whole turkey and waste loads of turkey, etc. Uh, in most of the big retail supermarkets, you can buy turkey slices. Um, so I have some prepared earlier. <laughs> if I can find them. Turkey slices. Dead easy to use because they're already sliced. Two seconds. <laughs> you out. really are the naked show. I've just seen your bum. No, you haven't. <laughs> no, you haven't. Sorry. Have you, you got your flesh coloured pants on again, have you? I have, yes. But that's <laughs> in my wife's, but they're a bit tight. <laughs> Fine. What I'm going to do. Pardon? I, hope, I hope you've got your sausage meat covered, you four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> my, my breakfast is covered oh, well. I wish, I wish you used to that. 
Why have a naked chef when you can't be a naked chef? Exactly. Right, um, I've just got some clean from out, as you might see. Um, people can do this in foil sure. if, if they want to. Sh Sean, Sean, if you, Sean, if you just push your um the, the white the whiteboard towards the end of the bar a bit, mate. That's it. That's it. Thank cool. You. That's it. That's fine. That's it. We can see it now. Cool. There we go. Uh, most people, when they do the roast turkeys, they um they wrap them in streaky bacon, give it extra flavour. I have some streaky bacon. But it's dead easy. What I would do is lay out. I don't know, four or five pieces of bacon per, per piece, depending on how much you want it. Would you have you smoked or unsmoked, Sean? Pardon? Would smoked or unsmoked be better? Um, it depends if you like smoked, can I get smoked? Okay. If you like unsmoked, get unsmoked. Um, there's no preference to it. I have unsmoked at the moment, although I do prefer smoked, but it's no need. Right. Turkey slices, can you see? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the turkey breast is sliced. There's just nothing, nothing yeah. hard about it. Lay it across. Then the so the bacon goes this way, the turkey goes that way. Yeah. Um, the cranberry stuffing. The sausage meat, bit of stuffing mix. Go it out. And centre across. Can you see? Yeah. yeah you you see that? Angle, so, in the middle. so you pop that in the middle. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, it's in the middle. Nice and easy. I'm going to wash my hands now. <laughs> You've got to keep smiling. Um, Excellent shot. Priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an essential when you're cooking? Uh, well, per cider. No, any alcohol's fine. It doesn't have to be per cider. Any alcohol's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can see I've cut off the clean film and I have. Can you see that? All right, can you put the yeah, bottom just the in the background and lift it up? Can okay, yeah, you see that and the bacon it's across the that way, turkey across this way, and the film of the stuff in the middle. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, we can see that. And what you want to do is just roll the clean film over. Yeah, I've rolled it up. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Roll it over. Roll up in the cling film. Skills. Nice and tight. <laughs> you got like a sausage. A it does. Sausage. It looks like a big sausage. Okay, but that's, obviously that's wrapped up in your bacon, your turkey, and your stuffing, yeah? You yeah. That's, that's sexual, that is, Sean. Sexual. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You want to watch yourself, sweetheart. <laughs> Sean, can I ask you a question? You can. What, the cling film melt in the oven? No, I'm not going to put it in the oven. Oh. <laughs> but you can, if you want to put it in the oven and roast it like a roast dish, uh, do the same, similar foil, put it, in the, put it on the foil and roll up into a cylindrical object, and no fallacies, please. And you could roast it in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes at about 185. But I prefer to do mine on a simmering pan of water, because what all the juices... All the juices stay inside, and you can use the juices to put in your gravy. Yes, it's much better yeah. juicy. Yeah, totally. We like a juicy. <laughs> we do meat like it juicy. Yeah, mm, you all like a meat parcel is juicy. So, I would have thought to do that. I would, I would have put it in the oven. Ah, right. The water done. It's when I rolled it up. I've tied it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. just on a reef knot. Nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> Simple reef knot. Double half inch. <laughs> You've got a nice little parcel, as you can see. Yep. Yeah. That, awesome. that, that looks really a young. nice parcel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, thank you very much. Good. Much You're welcome. What I'm going to do then, I've got a pan on my hob over the side, simmering water, uh, around six or seven on my induction, or obviously gas, okay. or whatever it needs to be, just so it's just simmering. And you can lay that in your water uh, for yeah. about 20 to 22, 24 minutes. So I'll put this okay. in now. And then we'll move on to the cheesy uh, meagies. Right, perfect. Right, cool. so what I'll do as well. Um, I've um, mise en place, and it's triple artist, stuff and balls. Yep. 
Yeah, to go obviously with, with dinner as such. Nice. <laughs> There's a crack in your kitchen. Is there? <laughs> There's a crack in your units. <laughs> oh, no. So this granite cost me a fortune. <laughs> right, then, so while that's cooking, choose your chip last. I'll take about the same time in the oven. Okay. I'll put it in with the roasties about 20 minutes from the end. And the, um, the turkey, the valentine, will be sitting there cooking away. So what I'll do then, everyone's favourite, choose the amiettes. Right, so, are you going to have to explain what this is? Because obviously not being in the Navy, a civilian. The amiettes is a... Um, it's, it's, it's quite a good snack lunch. Um, it's not really a main course. It's a good snack lunch. It's, you've got your carbs, proteins, and you've got your fats. You've got, you've got cheese, your ham, uh, obviously, and your, your bread, your carbs. So what I've done today, I was going to do something really different and use the poached egg today, but that's too healthy. You know, we want a proper cheesy hammy egg. Um, right. But I have done one healthy thing. I've used um, Warburton's uh, Thins. Anybody seen okay. them at the shops, yeah? yeah. Um, I mean, you can use white toast is what Matlow's usually have because it's a bigger meal. Okay. Um, but what I do is a bit of a starter for a meal. So um, you can toast them on one side, not a problem at all. And then grate some cheese. I, guess I use mature cheese because I like the flavour. Um, and you can have a drop of English mustard. It doesn't have to be English. You could use Dijon or you could use whole grain if you want to. But okay. English mustard is what we... Um, normally use, uh, salt, pepper, and then it's your flavouring, so you can put more pepper if you want to, like a peppery. Yeah. Now, I've heard recipes over the years, people put Branston in. Why they put Branston in, I don't know, um, but some people do. Right. Is that not a Navy thing, then? You don't no. put Branston in? <laughs> it depends if you're pump or you're good. From my experience, um, some people like it with, some people like it without. Um, you can put it on if you want to. You can put it on under your ham um, while you're doing it. So it's just not mixed in with the cheese as such. Or you can serve it as a side dish, you know, like a, rather than having a brown sauce or whatever, or ketchup, or whatever, as most okay. members will probably have. Mm, sounds um, nice. A little bit of, you've got one cracked egg. So I mix the egg up with the mustard, salt and pepper. Just, just mix it up and you'll get you'll end up with a paste, a uh, cheesy paste. I've seen guys on YouTube, um, I don't know if they were ex matlows I hope they weren't because they had no idea. And they were just putting grated cheese on top of the sandwiches. But no, it's a proper paste we make up. Um, yeah, put the cheese in. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. But like well, an omelette. Kelly, Kelly will know. It's not, you don't put grated cheese on it, do you, Kelly? No. No. That's just cheese on top of the freaking fried egg on lazy, top. Of it. Isn't it? <laughs> That's just lazy, isn't it? That's just disgusting. Um, some people put just sauce in, you know, put flavour in or whatever. But you know, it's up to you. Right then, I'll get some, get the, 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 some sliced ham. It can be good ham, it can be bad ham. Um, you won't really taste the ham because you'll taste the cheese. Um, da -da -da. And you can put as much as you want on the ham. I usually put a couple of slices on because I'm uh, quite a sort of uh, protein-y sort of guy. So you don't break it up, you just slap it in? No. You can trim the edges off, which is probably best to do because obviously you want to um, uh, stop the uh, edge of the hams burning when you put it under the grill. So I'll just trim these off quickly while you're still watching. <laughs> Um, so we put some ham yep. on top of your bread, whether it be um, you know a, a toasted white sandwich or whatever. You can use anything you want to bread-wise, whether it be muffins, thins, toast, white bread, brown bread, whichever you want to. It's um, The choice is what you want it to be. Obviously, Matlow's is just white bread. Um, I'm just going to get a pallet knife. I haven't got any more comments now. <laughs> I don't know. And then all we do is we um, cover yep. the top of the bread. Spread it all the way across. Try and cover all the bread you want because that's what's going to burn first. 
so we can make sure you cover all the corners of the bread. Good point. Cover the corner. There's a top tip. Top tip, yeah. Cover the bread. You don't want burnt yeah. bread. You don't want no. burnt bread. So I'm just going to do the one at the moment. Because oh, I'll have mine later, you see. So we have. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And I'll put it in the grill, under the grill. <laughs> Don't walk in. Right. And obviously, without a cheesy ham head, you've got to have a what? Egg. An egg. An egg, yes, yes. So uh, while I was toasting under the grill, I've got a, I, unfortunately, I can't stick the, where, my, where my kitchen is. I'd love to stick you on uh, the corner by the door there, because you see the kitchen, the whole the kitchen at one go. But unfortunately, I've got guinea pigs in the way there. So <laughs> I can't really show you everything I can do. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put a guinea pig on there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Depends if you're from Peru. Peru. I know, guinea piggy eggy. <laughs> God, God. You know, I'd probably rather put them on the barbecue, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's what the sort of meat they are, because when they're cooked on open fire, they're small rodents, aren't they? You know, mm. once, you, once you burns all the hair off them, they're just, the meat just cooks. Apparently, the skin's quite crackly. Oh, do you know this? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody told I'm, you. Somebody told you. <laughs> It must have been. The further south I've been is probably yeah. know, south of uh, Trinidad Tobago. And that was a bloody hot place. And I wouldn't be barbecuing out there. I'm telling you. God blimey. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the world cheesy onion is grilled under there. I've got a fried egg sticking over there. The turkey valentine is sticking over there. I should have put a timer on, shouldn't I? But I knew what time when I record past. So we're going about to about 22. Um, um, what I've done previously as well. Pardon? No, it's okay. I was just going to have a little bit of a chatter while we wait. Okay, yeah, have a chatter. Let's go. So tell me, obviously transitioning from the Navy, I've been working with a lot of veterans of the Green Task Force. Yeah. Um, tell me what it was like transitioning. Obviously me to a civilian, you know, I, I get up, I go to work and do the... Tell me the, the, the lifestyle that you had and how different that is from obviously transitioning into normality. Well, I mean, I suppose with the military for me, I mean, obviously I was there from a young age, you know, as most people are, you know, and, you know, before they're 20 years old, they're in the military. I mean, there are people that could join later on, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I was in for you know, 17 and a half. I had my 18th birthday during my part three training uh, when I was at rally. So I had my first legal pint um, at HMS rally during my catering training, um, which is quite fun. I done my cooking training at St. Elmer Barracks and all the shots, and then obviously we've been doing our catering uh, a rally. And um, after the time I'd served, uh, it was different for me because, I mean, some people when they leave, they leave after time or they leave because of medical redundancies. Um, my, my case is a bit different because obviously I'd lost my wife, my spouse, and obviously I was left with a child. So it was a bit difficult for me, but um, when I left and did my resettlement, people were, um, you know, what you want to do, you know, you can stay in, you can send your son off to private school, la -di -da -da. but I didn't want that, you know, my son was my son, I wanted to bring him up myself. Um, I haven't done the best of jobs, but he's all right, he's not a bad kid. Um, but no, such wise, a uh, bad parent, no. You don't um, get given a handbook when you become a parent. You, oh God, you, you don't, know. no, no, it's, you, you know, do it's, 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 you do the best you can. But when I was doing resettlement, you know, what do you want to be when you leave? I said, you know, I chose a chef when I joined the Navy because I thought I'd always be in a job. Um, and up until recently, over the last two, 10 months, as everybody knows, that's a different game nowadays. Um, yeah. So I retrained as an auto electrician, thinking I'd done an AA training course with uh, St. Homer Barracks again, with a bunch of Remies. Um, and you know, I passed, no flying colors, no worries. But trying to work with the AA, doing a 24 hour cover system with a, a being a single parent was not my thing. Um, so I ended up working at a place called Turnbull's in Plymouth um, as an electrician, fitting car audio alarm system and mobilizers, trackers, you know, playstations and stuff for people's cars they wanted to do. And I enjoyed it because I love cars. Um, uh, but the job was working, you know, six days a week and um, working Saturdays, but as a single parent, again, trying to find childcare on a Saturday. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, not ideal. So um, I ended up working in Dartmouth Prison for a year, 
uh, trying to find my feet, what I wanted to do, teaching, training the inmates, health and safety, health and hygiene, food safety, etc. cetera. Uh, didn't really work out for me again after a year. So I flipped from job to job, um, worked briefly at one of the National Trust places before I got a job in a, a company selling packaging and labeling. I worked there for about two and a half years or so. And then we lost our big contract to Sheba in Plymouth. They moved to Poland after doing a few trips out there. Um, so yeah, I was in limbo again. So I moved to Exmouth with my then second wife five, six years later on and uh, gone to schools. Now schools was really, really good for me, especially being a single parent or I was then with my, my wife then who had a child the same age as my son. And it was, yeah. um, it was ideal. You know, working the seven till three, three thirty, every afternoon off, you know, every weekend off, twelve weeks holiday, a year, you know, with the kids and that. It was great life, mm-hmm. but the pay was piss poor. Um, yeah. You know, but thankfully, I was in a position where I could live with that short term, not long term. You know, I couldn't live with it the rest of my life. Um, but me and my uh, my second wife didn't go our own ways. But our method be split. You know, we we got the wrong together, wrong reasons, went our own ways. And then I, um, I thankfully found a job at uh, Ginster's uh, restaurant manager there, looking after the staff restaurant there. And that was a great job, a great company to work for. Um, looked after the staff really, really well. A lot of facilities laid on for them. And then I, uh, I met, you can't see her, she's over there reading a book and playing on a laptop. My lady yeah. wife, um, she was my partner back in, oh, 88. Uh, she met my first girlfriend when I was, I was 16, she was 14. Um, we started dating. Uh, we got engaged just after I joined the mob. And then uh, obviously me being in service life and her studying a bit chemical engineering, it wasn't to be at the time. So we uh, went over in separate ways as such. But yeah, years on, years on, years on. Um, I found her again. Her sister was in the Navy, uh, Sam. She was uh, an RO working at a white hole. Um, you know, security stuff on our malarkey. Got chatting. And then, you know, 10 months later, I decided to move up this way, up neck of the way, back up north again. And uh, yeah, we got married in 2013 and we got a, a four-year-old little daughter. So, uh, and we bought our own yeah. place in uh, 2012, wasn't it? We bought that, yeah. And we just, like, you know, life's moved on and touch. Oh, crap, it's burning. <laughs> that. That's perfect. Couldn't oh, ask for more for that. Excellent. Oh, Cheesy, I'm that, was that was really good timing. Right. <laughs> anyway, Dan's got a so, yeah, hard on right now. Um, after moving up here, uh, I took a job straight away uh, in chefing, as you do, because that's what I was trained to do. And then um, the last job I've been in for five, nearly six years, um, uh, a great big farm shop in the Northwest, been running for 60 years. Uh, mm-hmm. I moved the restaurant along from a daytime place to a nighttime eating steak and bar grill, a really good place to work. But obviously, with the COVID pandemic, we all, um, well, 52 of us got made redundant in the catering industry there. So it's a really, really crap place to be. So um, we were furloughed for a while and uh, I worked for a while. But now I'm in a position where I'm doing agency work at the moment. So I haven't got a full time permanent job. But I mean, the pay's good, but it's not permanent work. And I'm just yeah. I'm in a process now. I'm looking for um I'm gonna turn the oven off before I get told off. Um, <laughs> stop looking. Um, I'm gonna start looking for a more permanent lane of work. Um, one of the guys, chefs I used to know, Del Knight, he's a great chef I used to know, uh, helped me out as a good friend as, as a young man though. Um, he's been on the trains, he caught COVID early this year. Um, he was in hospital for like 12, 14 weeks, had a track you know, with everything. He's been working for Northwest Trains for a while, and he's been putting me in uh, job opportunities, uh, opportunities, sorry, uh, for the train services, which I applied for. But as you say, for the trains, it's a lot of people applicating for the job, after, after, uh, applying for the job. <laughs> yeah, have some more drink. He'll help you speak better. <laughs> um, so, um, but the process is a long-term process. So. I'm hoping to keep yeah. the work up till then, but yeah. I'm still looking elsewhere to see where I'll go. I mean, I've flitted from job to job since I left the services, and I've not right. really had much support from the services to start with, right. um, or even okay. long-term stuff. The Royal British Legion, they helped me out with a wheelchair when I was off after the accident uh, for like five months, which is really good of them. Um, and the um, 
Lauren BNT, Royal Naval Benevolent Trust, where you pay 50 pence a week, you know, 50 pence a month, isn't it? Is that how much we paid, Stan? I think so, mate. Yeah, I think 50 yeah. pence. Yeah. We used, to, we used to pay into that, didn't we? And they helped me out for a little while doing things in bits and bobs. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm here together now and I'm, you know, persisting is what I'm doing. And it's been pretty good. So I get the egg. <laughs> um, we've, just, we've just had a, qu a question, or I think a statement, Sue. Um, apparently, Andrew Steele won't stop talking through the film. So I think whoever is listening, maybe it's one of the, <laughs> the guys, which is quite funny. I just thought I'd mention that. Uh -huh. Do that. <laughs> yeah, it's just flagged up as one of the questions. And um, as the host, I thought I, I shall bring that. So whoever you're with, um, can you stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> Me? You told him. No, not you. Not, not you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Look at that. I eh? A cheesy Ami Eggy. A proper one. They, they never look like that on ship, though. No, because he's on slices of bread. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's a nice. really tasty dish, that is. Yeah, only, when, you, like only, only when you and Kelly were on. They, they look like that. <laughs> so, what, Thank Kelly, you. what do you think, then? Out of 10, Kelly, what do you think? Oh, mate, turn it all the way up to 11. It's, you know, it's, it's, oh, it's a bit. nice, it's a good, it, you know, that'd be a good breakfast as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's making you, me hungry. Good hangover yeah. food, that. Yeah. You know what? Mm. This is my lady wife, so I'm on mine later. You, you, need to, you need to Uber Eats that to Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> Uber <laughs> Eats. It'd be a bit cold, man. I suppose you could warm it up, couldn't you? Quite cool. Oh, yeah. But um, the things like the cheesy ammy egg is you can prepare them the day before, cover them up and stick them in the fridge, you'll be fine, and then obviously put them in, you know, and under the grill the next day. Um, same with the Valentine, it's um, just check the timings, don't worry. Um, the Valentine's, you can prepare them on Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve. They'll be all right in the fridge for two or three days. Um, and then while you're doing all your veg prep and everything on the day before, put them in, in, a, in a boiling water or in the oven on about 180, 185. About 22 to 24 minutes uh, should be enough. Um, um, you can always buy a temperature probe from like BM or the range for about four or five quid just to check that above 65 degrees. Um, and then, yeah, you should be fine. But there's stuff you can rather than having to buy a whole turkey, you know, for you know, maybe two, three, or four of you. You know, I don't even get small turkeys, but it's just, I've just seen they can be a waste of money. Man, I know people use them for like chicken, sorry, turkey curries and turkey pasta and you know, whatever else, turkey soups and whatever else they do, turkey for heaters and et cetera, et cetera. Mm, wow. It's just something, you know, you can save Best money on. You know, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So how's your um, how's your meat doing? <laughs> that, which sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 it's doing all right. <laughs> I mean, it's doing fine at the moment. I did, She's I over did there. That any other way than um, yeah, it's, it's simmering in the pan, I've isn't it? So how's got that? Got about another four minutes on that. Another four minutes, another four yeah. minutes. Sorry, I'm making myself go ready. <laughs> <laughs> like matting your hat. Give me I'm gonna take my potatoes at two seconds. Okay. <laughs> Spuds are looking good. Thankfully, I'm quite lucky. When I um, when we built, we bought this house. We um, it was this where I'm living in now, where we are now. Was the original lounge? Um, I think it was the first the bedroom at first, or was it always the lounge? Oh, it was always the lounge, and we had the hallway, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we lived in the house for a year or so before we decided when we were changing the house around. That everybody knows when people come around, that your family, families come around, friends come around. They always congregate around the kitchen. So we thought we'd make this big area here. Um, yeah. The kitchen diner, yeah. you know, we've got, we got TV on the wall there. We've got, you know, seating over there. And we've got yeah, the whole kitchen area. We've got the fridges, freezers, wine coolers, which is always a priority. Oh, um, to make sure, you know, it, it's a welcoming and, and you know, a, a sociable place. So, yeah. uh, and that's how it should be. Well, uh, yeah. Sean, what's what's the difference between cooking on a ship and cooking on land, other than the obviously the it's it's sliding, so, other than the the thing is cooking on board ship. Um, you know, like on a, on a Type Forty Two that we Stan and I were on, uh, we were, it was yeah. Batch One once. You was your Batch Two, two, 
Uh, Newcastle. Yeah. Batch two. Batch two, yeah. Um, the um, You've got, what, 280, 290 staff on board? Uh, sorry, not oh, staff. Wow. Matt Lowe's. Um, Matt Lowe's. And, you know, you usually work a four-watch system in the kitchen, sorry, the galley. Um, but you have a set menu. You have four or five main choices, obviously desserts, beds, et cetera, et cetera. So nice. you know you've got a specific time allotment. So a G watch come in at half 11 to quarter, a quarter 12. For 15 minutes, for like 40, 45 people, they come in, go out, and then the main, the rest of the crew come in at 12 o'clock, between 12 and 12.30. Lunch went on to 12.45, I think, if, it, if I recall correctly. But like, you've got 240 people there coming through. Obviously, the officers mess, senior age mess, they all attend from their own messes, but knowing uh, a and, and military life, they all come through a set time. So you've got to get all your food, you can batch cook it as they come through. With civilian life and a civil street and a restaurant and all that, people come in and order whatever they want off a 30, 40, 50 choice menu, and you have no idea what they're ordering. And um, they come in and take food, you know, they order this and all that, that. With onboard ship, they get, get get what they're given. So they have four or five main choices, and it's it's easy, isn't it, Kelly? You know, compared to Civil Street, Marlow cooking or service cooking is really easy, isn't it? Yeah, compared to Civil Street, hundred percent. Like you said, oh. it's a set menu, and set you know, you take it or leave it. it, done, it, or leave it. Yeah. Very much so. It's, it's it's like a compressed version of a restaurant. So yeah. everything is like super quick, but it's limited choices. Like, but on Civil Street, like you said, there's a billion and one flipping choices, and then somebody is going to go, "Oh well, I want this, but can you do this with it instead?" And you yeah. just like, yeah. or can you not have this on it, or can you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the and then they always hours. like to change the menu, and yeah. you, you have to oblige. And it's it's I think it's far more stressful working in a civilian environment. Yeah, that they they come with their own stresses, but I think working in a civilian restaurant comes with a completely different set of different problems level of stress, and it? stresses yeah. because there are there's so many different variables. At least in the navy. There were limited variables and things that could go wrong. So we, we just had a cheeky comment. Um, this three logged on as Andrew Steele, but I think I don't think it's actually Andrew Steele. But That's um, the, the difference it says the difference on the on the, the ship. You can't go to a better restaurant. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, you also never on. went to Newcastle, then, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good comeback so shot. the Chatham or St Albans, just saying. Yeah. And I've, been was good you, I've been told to ask you what's in the pies, chef. Is that a navy what's term? Mince. What's in the pies? What's well, in the pies? Chef? Or proper pies. I'm, I'm presuming that's something um, us civilians won't get. The answer is always mince. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gail, do us a favour. <laughs> Gail, do us a favour. Yeah. Don't say civilians, say civvies or strawberries. <laughs> Sippy strawberries. <or> strawberries. <laughs> strawberries. Yeah. Okay. Strawberry mimmies. Sippies. Strawberry mimmies. Sippies. Yeah. So I, how I, is your um, meat nearly done then? Because you've got a couple of minutes, have you? I just oh, just, wow. <laughs> yeah. She's not already. We're not, we're not burning, are we? We're not <laughs> burning. We're no, I wouldn't do that, would I? It's, um, we're, we're in a live event, so it'd be really stupid of me to do that, wouldn't it? It's all time to perfection. Is that your second glass? Pardon? I'm, I'm lagging behind. I'm your third. I started at four o'clock. I sent I sent AD a picture about ten past four, saying I was starting early. I think it's nerves got the better of me. <laughs> no, it is quite nervous. Doing. It is quite nervous. You've done a great job. Not I yet, think I we should do this as a sideline. I think we should actually do our own cooking program. I think anyway, we should actually do our own. I think we This is Rachel's, my wife. It's her first cheesy yummy eggy ever. I mean, her uh, dad is um, ex marine. He's an ex beret. Um, and how was it? She enjoyed it. Excellent. Good. So, but Rachel's <laughs> dad, my father-in-law, he's um, he's ex marine. Um, so. Uh, I gotta make sure I do look after his daughter really, really well. <laughs> yeah, ex Marine, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. 
Well, we I'll take your out. Can you see? I'll no, you need, back, lift, you need to lift it up. There we that's go. It. Move it back a little bit. I'm not going to say lift it up because that sounds wrong as well. Yeah, don't say lift it up. <laughs> no, no. Not very well, pretty wide. She said it looks like a horse's willy. <laughs> okay. That's what she just said. The thing we have it horses, is so she knows. Okay. <laughs> right, and so can you see it, can you? Yes, I can see that, yes. She's got the thing to keep them off. Yep. Does it look like a horse's willy? Anybody recognise it? Yeah. It's a bit small, apparently. <laughs> More a pony, I would say. Shetland pony. <laughs> <laughs> Shetland, really full. She's calling me Shetland. Um, do we have? They might have to lift it a little bit nearer to your... Camera. You reckon? Yeah, yeah can't pull, the, quite see pull that. the plate towards the white. Yeah, put, what you just cut it on. Pull the plate in front of you. That's it. That's Perfect. it. There, there we go. go. Perfect. Look just a little bit closer. Oh, we can even see the steam coming off. Wow. Right. Look at that. That's perfect. That looks lovely. So, what would you right. have with that? Well, it's Christmas. What do you reckon you have with it? Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> not when he's got his bum out. <laughs> and it's lucky it's just my bum. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> is that is that a navy, is that a navy thing? Because there's a lot of guys on one ship. If you've got your bum out. <laughs> well, it's usually in a mess of a, well, how big is your how's the ROS mess? What, 16, 18? 18. I know the chef's mess was about 12, so... 18 months. And the stoker's mess was about 40 odd, wasn't it, so... <laughs> no comment. So, proper crispy dinner. Look at that. Wow. Amazing what you can make in 44 minutes. 42 minutes. Yeah. 42, yeah. Oh, well, actually, a little bit less. We started a couple of minutes late, didn't Yeah, I certainly did. <laughs> People are chattering. <laughs> oh. And here's, here's the veg you prepared earlier. It's really wow. awkward having this camera angle, so move around. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, Sean. Amazing. Well, when you've got your naked chef show, you can have a cameraman. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Ah, that. Oh, that looks brilliant. Right, I'm starving. Yes, very nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry now. But unbe unbelievable. <laughs> so, one thing left to go. The gravy. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I haven't got a gravy for us. Hello. <laughs> I've used my initiative. Okay. Perfect. Wow. Oh, it's like an M&S advert. Trying to, get, trying to get this all right angles. No, that's it's perfect. It's like an m, &S, m s advert. Look at that. That looks amazing. And rather than, um, unfortunately, um, on board ship, the good thing about uh, Christmas Day is the chief cook usually is a FDO, flight deck officer, and he usually gets all the wafus to come in and cook Christmas dinner for you. So all the lads in the kitchen there in the galley, they prep all the food Christmas Eve, and then come Christmas Day, the chief cook comes in with all the flight deck crew, and they come in and do Christmas dinner for you when you're at sea, which is really good. When you're alongside, they don't give a crap. But so when you're at sea, it's not so bad. John, so, what's a wafu? Uh, wet and fucking useless. Wet and fucking useless. Yeah, wet and fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Wow. Oh, I just did on a budget. It's um, nice and easy, cheap to do, rather than buying a whole turkey, la di da di da. As you say, there's no point in doing that. Uh, there's only two or three of you, especially with this, the way this year has gone. It's um, really awkward to um, 
you know, go meet up with families, etc. So I thought we'd just try something that's you know, not going to cost the earth, but still give you a nice Christmas dinner, you know. And, uh, and, it'd, be, and it'd be nice I, and moist, Sean, moist. You know, my meat is always moist. My lady wife. <laughs> uh, uh, you end up beautiful. Oh, How are you doing? That's amazing. Good, good, good to meet you. So, um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mrs. You know, Rachel will be wanting to come on these programmes all the time now, Sean. Well, it's, it's, you know what, to be honest, I know I'm a chef, and I hate being a chef. <laughs> I mean, Kelly will probably agree with me here. You don't want to go to work all day long and then cook when you when come, you come all back. day home. Yeah. 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 Last thing yeah. you can do, I mean, when you got kids, I mean, yes, some kids, as they get older, they will eat the same foods as you. Look, but I'm lucky to get them to eat chicken nuggets, mate. Flaming mm-hmm. hell. Fries but, my um, head. <laughs> but as you say, you know, it, um, they will, uh, at the end of the day, they will end up eating similar foods to you. We've changed, I've changed some of the recipes I use. Like, you know, think of the basics of like bolognese and chilies and stuff. Annalise won't eat them with chunky onions and peppers. So, no, no, like, where's, it all, where's it all down, isn't it? Hang it on your veggies in exactly. the sauce. Oh, it's yeah, a sauce, that's, that's yeah. Coming. That's yeah. coming. And yeah. instead of using kidney beans, use baked beans. And, yeah. And, yeah, and she'll have that. She loves curry. A yeah. little girl loves curry. I mean, I don't have any mild cold comas and stuff, but she loves the curry. But um, the two dishes that my wife always cooks, she does a really good um, Weight Watchers tikka masala, which is a stunning dish. <laughs> and she does, what's the other one? Ginger and peppercorn curry. Uh, one of the uh, That ones. sounds nice. And it, it, it's a full bulb of garlic in it, you know, it's it's a really good curry, marinade overnight, you know, it's a really good curry, but she does good That's curries, nice. and I just cook everything else. Yeah, just just make sure you put your address on the uh, comments, mate, and when, when Rachel's cooking, we'll all come round. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel has learned how to cook more food since we've been together than she's done the whole previous oh, 40 wow. years of her life. Well, there you go then. Yeah, don't ever marry a chef, she said. <laughs> no, <you're standing. laughs> Good advice, that Rachel. Oh, well, yeah, perfect. I suppose it's one of those things that you know you just get on with, you know. But I'm um, <laughs> working. I mean, at the moment, I'm working with the agencies at the moment, trying to find a full-time job. So my shifts have been, you know, six twos, two tens, ten sixes. So yeah, it's not been too bad. It'd be great for me personally because I get to take my little girl to school twice a day. Uh, you know, tw- twice every yeah. two weeks, and I get to pick it up from school every couple of weeks, which unfortunately, previously working, you know, seven, five shifts, five days a week, you've not been able to do every single day. So, uh, yeah. with my son being born when I was in the services, I mean, I saw my son for 11 weeks in his first year of life because I was, um, he was born the 4th of August, 97. I went to Africa for two months in September, and I was over a month, and then we went to the Caribbean for eight and a half months. So I saw him like 11 weeks in his first year. So I missed so much stuff. But now yeah. I'm a civilian. I've caught up with seeing all that, which is really, really yeah. nice. I mean, nice. Kelly, were you, were you in the service when you had your children? No, mate, no. You were a civvy? Yeah. Yeah. So you, mm-hmm. you, you managed to catch it all, haven't you? I did. I was really lucky. Yeah. I, missed that I can't imagine first. how difficult it is serving and uh, having kids. Hats off to anybody who does it. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, some people they um they you know some people's wives or partner or husbands, whichever way it goes, they they, they thrive on it, they really yeah. do, um, and they can live the life and they enjoy the life because they have their their own personal kingdom, being a parent and looking after the household. And when the partners come back, it's well, like funny you know, enough that that family. was me, Sean. Funny enough yeah. that was me because I left the navy to marry a squaddy. You married him? <laughs> Who? Yeah. What? <laughs> I didn't catch that right. Sorry, say that again, Kelly. That's sacrilege. <laughs> sacrilege. I so I, 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 I've seen it from from both perspectives. So yeah. I was the wife at home raising the kids while he went off and did stuff. Oh, what sort of stuff? He's Remy. So all right. Yeah. I, I, I'm not just keeping his hands in, yeah. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> <laughs> We're not together anymore, so. <laughs> oh, sorry. I do apologise. Sorry. Sorry, Kelly. No, don't apologise. Yeah. He was too he good with his going. hands in, yeah? 
Well, the children are sat Let's in the room, so topic. I need to be very careful yeah, we'll of what I say. Okay, sorry. No more. Leave the subject. <laughs> oh, dear. Gail, okay. what the hell have I got my health up in for now? <laughs> so, so that's, that's it. We'll wrap the show up then, unless anybody's got any more questions or wants to know anything more about Sean and his cooking. I've got lots of things under my cooking, you know. <laughs> well travelled man, I'm getting old now. Yeah, absolutely brilliant, Sean. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Well, Thank there's you. There's a lot Sean. of chats on there. Yeah, there is. There is. It's good. <laughs> What's on the chat then? I'm in the rush to go away. I'm still drinking, so I don't care. Yeah, we we just monitor that kind of stuff for like questions and things like yeah. that. And then... Yeah, we'll perhaps leave some of the questions there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll leave that from there. Perfect. Uh, Lee McPherson. He said, what ship are you on for the week's trip? I was on HMS Newcastle, 97-98. Can you hear that? I don't yeah. have to type it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Mate, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Well, um... I'm trying to look here at the moment of these comments. Sorry, right, that's, yeah, that's, that's Gail's job. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Naked, yes. Yes, we'll, we'll leave some of those comments, I think. Um, uh, that's why I've left them. So we'll leave it there. Perfect. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it clean for the green TV. So we'll say Thanks. goodbye. And it was absolutely brilliant. And we've got, we're looking forward to Kelly next week. So I'll tune back in, please, <laughs> on Tuesday, isn't it, AD? Yes, so it's Kelly, so nice. what you're doing on Tuesday. Kenny, um, nothing as posh as a turkey valentine. <laughs> that's not posh, it's a simple dish. <laughs> it sounds it though, isn't it, valentine? It does sound good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing a Christmas sausage roll wreath. Perfect. So it's just a giant I'll, sausage I'll roll leave, in the shape of a wreath. I'll um, leave the sausage in the sausage in there, lady. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah. What sweet are you doing, Kelly? I'm kind of regretting that choice now. Aren't I? No, you're not. <laughs> I'll keep, and, I'll keep the, it and I'm doing a really like quick sort of. It's not really dessert. It's more of just making your own sweets. I'm making microwave fudge. That's like ridiculously quick and easy. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that sounds lovely. So, um, so I, I presume Kelly. you're your bum covered, Kelly. Or... <laughs> oh, oh no. God, yes. I don't, nobody wants to see that. I nobody. Oh, yeah, it's I not that bad. I think we'd have <laughs> the ratings up, I think, Kelly, on that one. But, but we'll keep it clean with sausage and fudge and bums out. It's probably not the way we want to go forward, is it? Do you know what I'm looking forward to the most? What? The way Kelly manages her meat and her wreath. <laughs> oh, God. And on that note, we shall. Yes, we'll on that note. Is it too late to change my menu? <laughs> Kenny's getting embarrassed. She's gone all red. <laughs> She's not embarrassed. You don't know her like I know her. Uh, <laughs> are you not the ex husband, are you? Uh, <laughs> right, okay. Right. right back to you, AD, then. So um, we'll wrap up tonight's show thanks everybody for coming and joining in and i think all for breakfast tomorrow we'll be having cheesy hammy eggy you. Are you so, right? well done. thank you very much sean no, excellent you guys. Cheers, 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 have bye a good bye. evening guys thank you bye. thanks for coming take care, take care. Bye, have bye. a good evening guys bye Be safe. bye, bye. 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 bye.